Welcome in to another edition of SE Checks In presented by First Texoma National Bank. We've got three very special guests with us today, three senior men's basketball players, Kellen Manick, Adam Dorsky, and Bobby Johnson. Gentlemen, how are we doing? Doing great. Doing good. Doing good, doing good. Good deal. Well, I appreciate you taking time uh, sitting down with us and talking a little bit about Southeastern and uh, your experiences and all that. Uh, we'll just kind of – Kellen's from uh, Hera, Oklahoma. He's been here uh, since 2018, played in 62 games, 855 points, 385 rebounds, 162 assists, uh, two-time All-GAC selection, GAC Distinguished Student Athlete. Bobby's been here since uh, 2015. He's from Atoka, Oklahoma, so he's local. Um, he's played in a bunch of games, 67 total, 500 points, 152 rebounds, a uh, bunch of assists. And then we've got Adam Dorsky, been here since 2017, played in 88 games, started in 81 uh, of them, 1,000-point uh, score, 282 rebounds. There you go. Um, 550 assists in three seasons. Uh, he's the Southeastern record holder for career assists. Um, he's the SC and GAC record holder for assists in a season with 261 and a two-time All-GAC selection. So if you uh, look at Southeastern Oklahoma State University and see what we've done over the last two years, these three have played a key role in going to uh, the NCAA tournament back-to-back. -back. So uh, we lost a couple pieces, but we're super excited to get uh, this core group back. And they've been here for a while, so they know what it's like to, uh, to be at Southeastern. So we'll just kind of start there. We'll start with you, Bobby, uh, coming from Atoka, growing up, and uh, why Southeastern? Uh, I would chose Southeastern kind of was just – when I was growing up in Atoka, it's kind of a school you heard about somewhere. And it's also a place I wanted to come to because it was local. I could get my parents to come watch me and try and bring as much fans as possible to come see the games. And when I came and saw the games, it kind of liked the environment, saw the fans, how they interacted with the players. And it was just somewhere I thought I would, like, really excel at. Good deal. Adam, what about you? Yeah, so I'm kind of a little different than Bobby. So I, growing up, I never heard of Southeastern Oklahoma. I'm from the Dallas area. So, uh, but I always wanted to play, play college basketball. So my senior year rolls around, I start kind of emailing, texting different coaches. And uh, like April of my senior year, uh, one of the, Coach Jackson, one of the old graduate assistants here, I reached out and came up here and worked out. And I just love the coaches, the facility, uh, teammates, and uh, kind of happened pretty quickly within the span of three or four days. I'd never heard of Southeastern, and all of a sudden I'm committing there, and uh, I've loved every second of being here. So how far is Flower Mound from here officially? Hour and 35 minutes. So that's not bad. That's not bad at all. What about you, Kellen? Uh, starting off college, I was at Oral Roberts University, and after two years there, <clears throat> I transferred, and I was looking for a new place to call home. And uh, I actually, our graduate assistant now, Jet Joe. Uh, he was playing here at the time, and Jet and I kind of grew up together. Our parents went to the same college. And uh, through that connection and then getting to know Coach Green, I just decided this is the place I needed to be. And since then, I've loved every second of it. Well, I'm, uh, I'm from Tulsa. I'm born and raised from Tulsa. And I'm glad that you uh, left uh, Oral Roberts to come down to Southeastern. So, um, you know, I think that was a good decision for sure. So um, talk about your, uh, your time playing at Southeastern, Bobby. You know, been here a while. And, uh, you know, you, you've seen a lot of change and growth in this program. You've also seen a lot of change and growth in the facilities and in how we do things on game day. What's it like as a player at Southeastern Oklahoma State University for you? Uh, Sam, since I've been here for this, my, this will be my sixth year, you, you can kind of – you can really tell the environment's really changed from when I first got here. It was more of a – I mean, we weren't really the best team out there. I mean, we had a lot of guys, a lot of guys that – kind of like a lot of good players, but they didn't really like mesh together as well as it does now. And it just kind of over the time, you kind of see the support that the fan that we got from the fans just kind of grew and grew and grew. And then uh, the facilities, as far as the weight room, how, how nice the facility is now to where we compared to where we used to work out, it's just improvements. It's just helped everybody kind of grow. And you could tell like when you look at the guys, how, how they used to be compared to how they are now. You see guys are getting bigger, stronger, faster. And it kind of – it really helps out a lot and it transitions onto the court for us. So what about that room you're in right now, the film room? This film room is nice. It was, when I first got here, it wasn't it wasn't as like this. I mean, sometimes you'd walk in here and be hot. It'd be really hot or it might be really, really cold now. But 
they, I mean, they really done since I first got here, the chairs and everything, they really done a, it's really impressive what they done with the room. So. So right when, uh, right when I left and right when you got here, uh, they started to transition that area transition from the other area. side of the concession to, uh, to uh, a, 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 Film room, and so both are. So both are. That's, uh, that's an awesome thing that they get to use. Um, so, Kellen, talk about your your time here. Your three, your your uh, going on three years here, and, and your experiences as a uh, Savage Storm student athlete. It's been uh, unbelievable. Uh, I've loved every second of it. Uh, coming in, I didn't really know what to expect. Like I said, I had that connection with Jet from when we were kids, and just coming in from what I've seen, I mean, it's been kind of senior leadership. And uh, started off with really Jet, and then last year Kevin, obviously being our uh, being our star last year, and now it's trickled down to Adam, Bobby, and myself. And uh, you know, I can just tell the guys on the team truly care about each other. The coaches truly care about you, and we're just always looking how can we improve. Coaches, and that starts from the coaches all the way down. And that's one of the coolest things I've noticed about Southeastern. We definitely have grown a lot over the last couple of years. Uh, Adam, what about you? Yeah, so it's, ever since I got here in 2017, I've just kind of seen a, a steady increase, not just – not necessarily basketball town and production on the court, but just ever since I got here, I feel like things started to kind of come around and, you know, we got better teammates. And uh, I think a lot of that can be just credited to, like Bobby was saying, like obviously the coaches and trainers and everything, but the facilities too. I mean, everything just seems to be growing and growing and growing. And, um, I mean, that stuff does play – you know, a big difference in what we're able to do, you know, get in the weight room, having Coach Fears work with us, having, you know, film room and different things, new facilities, and that makes it makes coming to work every day uh, a lot easier. So I just think it's a, a combination of a lot of things. But uh, ever since I've gotten here, the, the program's, you know, kind of on an upward trend. I'll never forget when I was working at a, uh, another GAC institution in southeast Arkansas, we played uh, southeastern Oklahoma State early in January, and I think it was uh, Dorsky's coming out party as a freshman. I think uh, I think you all cooked us for about 28 in the game. I said, who is that guy? And we didn't have an answer for him at all. And I just remember leaving the court saying, that guy's going to be a dude. And then you, you look a couple years later down the road, and he was as advertised. So I just – I'll never forget that. Just wondering, who is this guy? And next thing you know, um, you know, he, he went – he got his for sure. So um, – Piggybacking off that, you all have had, had some uh, some great experiences being able to represent Southeastern Oklahoma State in uh, the NCAA tournament two years in a row. Um, talk about that first year and going the first time since uh, since 07, I believe, and, and talk about that, um, you know, and that experience getting and coming down to that buzzer beater shot um, and, tra and going into the second round of the NCAA tournament. Uh, it was – that whole whole year, my second year here was just a super cool experience. Uh, I want to say it was around January or February. We just – we started winning. We went – I think we won 10, 11, 12 games in a row. We just started winning games and started playing really well and things started coming around and guys started stepping up. And, you know, we go to the Commerce Tournament in Bartlesville and, uh, you know, are a few plays away from winning the GAC championship. But then, uh, you know, we're fortunate enough to, to uh, make the trip to Maryville and I just – I think about that time a lot and just how exciting of a time that was for our program. Not only, I mean, obviously the basketball aspect, but just such a cool, you know, environment to be playing for, you know, in the national tournament, uh, you know, something you dream about, you know, when you come to Southeastern and then obviously in, you know, the first round, we're not necessarily expected to win. Uh, we're playing a Northern state. who was the two seed in the region, I believe. And, uh, you know, we're, playing, playing, playing hard, hanging in there, down, you know, 10 or 11 points late in the game. And then all of a sudden Kevin gets hot and, and we start pressing them and they make a few mistakes. They miss some free throws. Uh, Kevin keeps hitting shots. Kyle hits a shot. And all of a sudden we get a look at the end of the game to tie it and send it into overtime. And, you know, at that point, you know, all the momentum was in our favor. And so, you know, we dominated them in overtime. And, uh, you know, that game, that game in particular is one I look back on uh, – you know, out of all the memories I've made at Southeastern. So that was definitely a, a fun time and a great year. I was working at another institution, and I remember uh, watching that game and just thinking, I, I, I just – when that when you made that shot, and I just was like, oh, my goodness. So Bobby, what was it like there from your perspective? Uh, from my perspective, 
perspective, I was, unfortunately, I was sidelined that year with an injury that caused me to sit out the entire year. But I remember seeing, watching the game on the TV. I remember my fate, like being up on the screen, like seeing us coming back. I remember for, as soon as Kevin hit the shot, I started yelling everywhere. But it was a super exciting moment. And just that, that year really helped me grow a lot in buying into the team and supporting guys, being there for guys, kind of just showing up even though I knew I wasn't going to get to do anything because I was injured, but just make me want to work hard to get back on the court so I can be out there and help them succeed and get to another year like that. Gotcha. What about you, uh, Kellen? Uh, the whole year was honestly pretty crazy. I uh, hadn't really had a lot of college basketball experience at that point. And so I was coming in and I was brand new to this whole thing. And I remember second semester, because that was the year Coach Fears would have started. Mm -hmm. And when Coach Fears came in, and he, he says to this day he had nothing to do with it, but I don't know. I think he might have. We, uh, we were 14-1 and one at one point in the second semester when Coach Fears got here and we were working out with him. And uh, it's like Adam said, we just kind of started winning games. And you look up and it's getting closer and closer to GAC tournament time and the national tournament time. And we pop into the top eight in the region rankings. And so every week we get to check that. And it's exciting. To, we're like, hey, we just win two games. We can't fall out of the region rankings, you know. And, so just every week having to work for that and work for that and then seeing it all uh, happen and we get to go to Maryville and have that experience and Kevin has that Cinderella ending to the game and we go to overtime and we win and it was just a crazy experience. And then seeing how it carried over into this next, into this last year, uh, we got a lot of respect and that was something I thought was really cool because before everybody was like, you know, Southeastern, oh, big deal. They've won some games. We'll put them in the top eight. I mean, we didn't lead the top three in the region the entire year last year. And there was moments last year where we weren't playing our best basketball. But just to see what the year before got us as far as respect-wise for this last year was pretty cool. So, you know, when I started here last year in August, that was the, uh, the buzz around uh, basketball. The men and women were going to have some firepower. And, and you had a unique situation at the beginning of last year when we went and played, uh, I won't say the name, but that school in Norman, uh, you got to uh, you got a unique situation there. What was it like playing against uh, your brother? Yeah, it was possibly the weirdest thing I've done in my life. Uh, we had, we talked about it before and after. We've never played basketball against each other until that moment. We were always on the same team. We're only a year apart, and now with me redshirting, we're the same year. And uh, just getting to be there, and you know, OU and playing on the court, and you're playing against your own brother, and you hit a shot, and he goes, "Hey, that was a nice move," and you're just like dude, we're on different teams. You're not supposed to be saying that. It's just a crazy experience. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Well, you know, watching uh, how we competed that first game in that exhibition, I, uh, I saw what we had. And, uh, you know, going into halftime, we had a, we had a lead on uh, that school in Norman. And uh, definitely we, we, we showed up to play. And then we got to uh, – you all got to have a pretty unique experience around uh, Christmas. I remember I took you all to the airport. You guys got to start your season uh, in Hawaii. How was that? Hawaii was a was a fun time. So actually, it would have been a lot better. But uh, first game we got there, we played Simon Frazier from uh, from Canada and get up on him big, playing real well in the first half. And I think we blew a 18 point lead. I don't know the exact number. We blew, anyway, we blew a big lead. So you know, the first day or right out the bat, you know, just kind of bummed. You know, we felt like we got let one get away from us. And then you know, good day of practice and. Next two games, we, you know, come around and start playing really well, beat a couple of good teams. And then so then we're able to kind of enjoy Hawaii a little bit more. And just the non-basketball aspect of it was just awesome. Just going to walk around and see. That was my first time I'd ever been. So just walking around everywhere with the, with the guys and, you know, going to the beach and doing different things. Just a lot of fun. And, uh, uh, you know, it was a great experience, even if, you know, we would like to go on 3-0. and But uh, overall, it was a great trip. Well, I'll tell you this. I was uh, I was pretty – pretty frustrated when I had to drop you guys off at the airport and get back in the van when it was 40 some degrees. And I know you all were heading to Hawaii and I'm sure coach green had plenty of Hawaiian shirts packed, ready to, to, to get away and, and get all that. Cause you know, how he is, he likes to wear those, uh, the Hawaiian shirts. Bobby, what was that experience like? That ended up being my first time ever getting on a flight. So I, I, won't lie, I was pretty nervous when the flight <laughs> took off. I, felt like I could feel myself kind of start to sweat a little bit, but. Overall, it was just a fun experience just to go out and kind of play basketball, but at the same time be around your, your teammates that you get to see all the time and enjoy just the environment that is Hawaii and just go out on trips and uh, the beach, as Adam said, 
it was just an overall exp uh, fun experience for us. So how was, uh, you know, that, that's a heck of a flight to hop on for your first flight going from southeastern Oklahoma to Dallas to uh, Hawaii. So, um, you know, what a first one to get on. I bet when you got off the plane, though, it was real nice to get on that island and get away from the, uh, the winter that we have in southeastern Oklahoma. Kellen, what about you? Hawaii was an awesome trip. I had never been before. And uh, just seeing it's almost like you're in a different country, but you actually don't even leave America. And, uh, you know, you talked about Adam's coming out party that you saw when he was like a freshman. Well, we had Bobby and Al Irvin, uh, both returners this year, that were coming off uh, injuries the year before. Bobby had his wrist injury and Al blew his ACL. And uh, I've always kind of laughed that that was their kind of coming back party. <laughs> we played number 14 in the nation, Colorado Mines, in our last game, and we were in trouble. And uh, Bobby and Al got in the game, and they played some big-time minutes for us and played really well. And just the basketball, it's like Adam said, we lost that first game. We shouldn't have. But then games two and three, we took care of business, and we just got to enjoy Hawaii, and it was a blast. Yeah, those were, those were huge, huge wins, and uh, they definitely helped us down the road for sure. So we transition into uh, Great American Conference play, and I'll be honest with you, you know, on our, on our, in our conference, it, it, each team is good, top to bottom. I mean, you've got you've to lock in and, uh, and get ready to go. But uh, I'll tell you, it, w it was sure nice. In, uh, in January, we came back uh, for the beginning of the spring semester, and we played uh, that school from Ada, and we, uh, we, definitely, we definitely turned it on, and I don't think we looked back from there. It was uh, – it was a sight to see, and, and we played so well that we got featured as a broadcasted ESPN game twice this year, and uh, the last one we had was at home against Henderson State, and that was a uh, double overtime thriller that uh, me standing on the sidelines, I don't, I just, I, as a fan in that game, and we had a huge crowd that night, I, man, what a game to come to, and uh, Adam, what was it like going to the line right there with point two zero two seconds left? You got to hit two free throws to tie it. And I thought, you know, the layup you had, I thought it was going in. I, I was ready. Uh, what was it like going to the line right there and uh, and having to hit those two huge free throws, knowing that oh. if one doesn't go in, it go in, it's ball game. It, if I were to tell you that I could feel my legs in that moment, I'd be lying to you. Uh, it's just one of those things where I get fouled and I'm sitting there on the ground. I look up at the scoreboard and I'm like, well. We're down to no time left on the clock, so I mean, it's do or die right here. So get the line. I mean, it's one of those things where you just got to trust yourself. You know, you shoot free throws every day in practice, and uh, you know, just got to step up and knock them down. It's kind of funny. Earlier in the year, we played at Henderson in a similar situation. I go to the free throw line late in the game, a uh, chance to to get a big road win, and uh, miss the front end of a one on one. And here we are, about a month later, I'm going to the free throw line against Henderson with a chance to redeem myself, but. Uh, I was able to knock him down, and I just remember that night, the whole, you know, ESPN was there, you know, every packed house, the atmosphere was crazy, and that was one of my favorite games as a Southeastern basketball player. That game uh, was uh, was fun. It was uh, it was cool because they had the, the goals mic'd up, and so when you went back and watched the replay, you know, you could hear when you made those shots, and then you hear the crowd just go crazy, and I'll, I'll never forget watching you all walk off the court going into overtime, just the – just – the energy you felt when the, you know, we had, we honored all our faculty and staff that night, all the student athletes for being, uh, you know, high achieving grade point averages. And I just, I'll never forget that walking off the court and just feeling that energy going into overtime thinking, all right, take a deep breath because uh, it's about to go. And so fast forward a little bit, go through the conference tournament and then uh, make it to the NCAA tournament again. And then uh, unfortunately the day before we play, you all got to Maryville, uh, before I did, I was on the way and they, they called it off and we had to come home. Talk about that experience, Kellen, um, with that and, and what that was like and, uh, and how that's kind of motivating you for this year. Uh, at the time, you know, I, we didn't really know what was going on. So initially it wasn't like a heartbroken feeling. I, I thought surely they were just going to move it back or do something like that. And then you just kind of realize oh wait they're completely canceling it like this is unbelievable we've worked so hard for this you know and you almost feel like you have it taken from you and I mean it it's tough the NCAA tournament but I felt like we had decent draws to you know have good matchups to try to make a run at it and just to have that taken away from you and you've worked so hard all year but at the same time I feel like that fuels you this offseason you know I've 
I just was banged up after the season. So I took about six weeks off after we got done. And ever since then, I've just used that as motivation to make myself better, make my body better. You know, there wasn't a lot of gym access this summer, but I could get to weights. Mm -hmm. So that's just kind of the motivation I used was to make myself better for this year. What about you, Bobby? How did, how did that, uh, that sit with you looking at that time thinking, man, I didn't know if I was going to get a waiver or not. Um, and talk about that situation and, and now, you know, how that motivates you uh, moving forward. Uh, for me, it was a little bit of a different, different situation because seeing the COVID, I, obviously we all thought it was just going to be like something that was just here for like maybe a month or two and maybe they'd like give us a chance to play again. But Going into that, not really knowing if I was going to be able to come back or not for another season, it kind of it, it played a little bit. I kind of took a little bit of time off to, like, rest, get my body right. And then after a while, I was just like, all right, I need to get back into it. I need to get in shape. Because if they, NCAA does approve this waiver, I need to be ready to go. So, But it was a little bit different for me because I didn't have access to a gym or a weight room for, like, maybe two months. So I kind of made my own home gym. So I had kind of had went and bought some weights and made a, I remember grabbing my mom's bench, her decorative bench, and I just put it out there and I'd be out there lifting weights, getting bit by mosquitoes. So it was kind of, it was a little bit different, but it kind of, it gave me, it gave me appreciation for being here and playing the game of basketball, getting the opportunity to play with guys like Kellen and Adam and just the team that we have. And it just gives me a appreciation for the game. So I'm just looking forward to this year because I believe uh, if we do get the season, I believe it'll be a great season for us. What about you, Adam? Yeah, I think, I mean, obviously it was disappointing not being able to play. And I think one of the most disappointing parts is, you know, last year we went to Bartlesville and we got beat in the semis, uh, the conference tournament by Henderson State. And obviously that was a bummer. We felt like, you know, we didn't play well down the stretch and, you know, we could have put ourselves in a position to possibly win a conference tournament, but, at the same time, you know, we once the selection show came out the next Sunday night, and we you know we got into the NCAA tournament uh, for the second year in a row. I think we were all just kind of looking forward to you know redeeming ourselves in a sense, you know, showing that you know that's not you know who we're capable of, and yeah, it's just you know you're excited to go back to Maryville, you know, as fun as it was mm -hmm. last year, and you know get to compete again, and then uh, obviously just really disappointing when we found out we couldn't play. But again, like Bobby and Kellen were saying. Uh, it's just more fuel for this year. It makes you want to, you know, just, you know, get right during the summer, work on your game, uh, work on your body. And, uh, you know, just as, you know, as big of a disappointment as it was last year, I think we're really looking forward to this year, you know, just a chance to compete for something that we weren't able to do last year. Well, we are, uh, trust me, from our end, we are ready, more than ready to start playing games and, uh, and doing all that. So we, we can't wait for the day that we're able to do that. So we're, uh, we're running out of time. We've got about nine minutes left. So we'll kind of hit some other things before we uh, let you all go. And I appreciate, again, you taking time out of your day uh, to do this. So uh, what's your schedule like now, um, Bobby, with, with COVID and all that? What's your class schedule like? And, and uh, talk about your academic career a little bit. Uh, my schedule has kind of changed up a little bit uh, more online classes than I would usually have. But it's, it's as far as like the Zoom meetings and stuff, it works out perfectly. The teachers are always willing to go the extra mile to make sure that students understand uh, like what's going on because it's kind of difficult now that you can't be in a situation to where you have a class full of students and you can kind of go over and tell them how to do something if they don't understand. They'll take time with you at the end of classes and then they give you like a one-on-one -on -one session or you can always call them or get a hold of them through email. So it's a, they're more, it's in a way it's made it, I wouldn't say better, but it's just made it, they gave more, they give more like attention to knowing that students aren't going to be face to face with them so that they kind of like have to give out that attention so that students can understand what's going on. But as far as academics, um, I will be finishing my kinesiology I believe this semester and I'll probably try and since this will be my last year, I'll try and finish my safety by the summer. So that's just something I started on when I was first came here and then switched over to kinesiology. So it, it'd be good to, by the time I'm done here to have a degree in both. So that's where I'm at with that. It'd be good. Kellen, what about you? 
Uh, my schedule hasn't changed a whole lot. I'm in the MBA program here, uh, getting my master's in finance. And so my classes were all online to begin with. And so just with, with COVID and everything, it all pretty much stays the same. Uh, and that's about it. It's, the teachers are really great. They do a good job. Uh, but everything for me has been pretty much the same. And we've got the math major, Adam. Yeah, so I'm finished on my math degree. I have one more class to take after, after this semester. But uh, the nice thing about being a math major is that, you know, especially now that I'm in my the higher level math classes, uh, most of my classes are pretty small. I have classes, you know, seven, eight, nine people. So uh, we're able to properly social distance in the classroom. Uh, you know, with such small numbers. So uh, as far as my math classes go, not a lot has changed. I mean, the desks are spread apart and you, know, you wipe down your desk whenever you get to class. But uh, other than that, you know, we're able to, to carry on just because there's not a lot of uh, not a lot of big classes, especially once you get higher up into the math department. So uh, I'm t I have a light load this semester. I go to class, I have one class every day of the week and I'm taking a couple of my online uh, kinesiology classes just to finish up my minor. But uh other than that, I'm planning on graduating in May. Good deal. So we've got about five minutes left, so we'll hit these real quick. Um, Bobby, post-graduation plans. Post-graduation plans. Probably move somewhere in the Dallas area, try and get a job with my safety degree. If not, if that doesn't really pan out for me, I'll probably try and get a coaching job, maybe go back in my hometown, kind of help out around there, be assistant for Coach Harrison back home if he's willing to let me. So that's kind of where I'm at with that right now. Good deal. Kellen. Uh, I'm going to stay around here. Uh, kind of fell in love with the area. Fell in love with the lake. It's not too far away. And uh, I'm going to go into banking probably. Use that master's of finance going to banking. There you go. Do some fishing too. Exactly. Are you the best fisherman on the basketball team? There's no doubt in my mind. <laughs> Adam. Well, not entirely sure yet. If everything goes according to plan and obviously, you know, injuries happen and stuff like that, but I'd really love to be able to uh, play basketball beyond this year, uh, overseas somewhere. I don't know where that would be or, you know, if that'll be possible, but that's kind of where my mind's at right now. And, uh, you know, we'll see where that takes me. And then after that, uh, at some point, I want to I wanna coach basketball, whether that be the high school level, college level, but I uh, definitely want to be around the game of basketball for a long, long time. Good deal. Um, is is Kellen the best fisherman on the team? Probably so. Uh, I mean, it'd be, it's a close one. I've only, I've only ever caught one fish in my life, so it's definitely not me. But uh, <laughs> as, as, as many times as he goes and as knowledgeable as he sounds when he's talking to me about it, I can't imagine that there's anybody that's better on the team. But that's just my my opinion. Sounds like you need to go to make sure he's not just talking the talk. You know what I mean? Yeah, I might need to yeah. backpack him one time, go with him, make sure he's not just showing me the same picture over and over again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Bobby, what does Southeastern mean to you? Southeastern to me is a home. It's, it's an environment that just wants to see me succeed. That's something Coach Green told me when he first recruited me. He said he wants me to graduate before anything, before basketball. School comes first, so – it kind of let me know right there that he cared about me more than on a basketball level. He cared about me as a person, as a young man. He wants to see me graduate and do well in life. And that's something he tells me every single year that I'm here. So I'm just – I'm thankful for the opportunity that they gave me. Kellen, what does Southeastern mean to you? I think Bobby put it perfect when he said it's a home. Uh, you know, whether it's Coach Beers or Coach Green, Coach Quinn, or the basketball staff, whether it's your teachers, uh, whether it's – the athletic directors, everybody just wants you to succeed. And uh, it's a great place to be. And I've had a ton of fun. Adam. I'm, just, I'm super thankful for Southeastern. Um, obviously for all the memories I've made on the basketball court and with teammates and stuff. I think most importantly, it's just the relationships I've been able to build, uh, you know, within Southeastern athletics and then within the Durant community, even uh, just getting to know, you know, teammates, coaches, administration, and, uh, just being able to be with these guys every day. Uh, it's just been a really special time here at Southeastern, and uh, I can't imagine myself being anywhere else. 
Well, that's the answer we get a lot from uh, from a lot of people is, you know, Southeastern and Durant, that's home to them. And, and, you know, that's kind of where their their second family is. And, you know, I agree with me being an alum, you know, I wanted to come back here because I feel the same way. You know, I felt that same way when I was here in 2011. And so, uh, God, that was nine years ago. So, you know, that's that's kind of how I feel as well. So we've got about two minutes left. Anything else you guys want to bring up, talk about? The floor is yours. Uh, I would just say thank you to everyone that supports us and thank you to the fans. Thank you for the administration, what they're trying to do to get us back on the court. Thank you to the coaches for the effort they put in every day to be as safe as possible. And hopefully we get to have a season and hopefully it's a great season. Trust me, I do too. I'll uh, kind of pick oh. Go ahead, Bob. That's all you. All right. uh, kind of piggybacking off what Kevin said, I'm just thankful for the opportunity that Southeastern has gave me to not only be here, but meet my teammates. They're going to be with me for the rest of my life. So it's kind of given me opportunity to grow as a person coming from a small town, meeting to a small high school and then meeting all these people and kind of putting myself out there to be a more social person. So it kind of, I'm very thankful for that. The fans, you, I can't say enough about the fans because we feed off the energy they give us. So it just, it, it really, it's, it's really been great to be here. And as long as I've been over here, it's, it's, it's just gotten better. And I hope it just continues to grow. I've got nothing. They said it all. Oh, there it is. Well, Storm fans, three student athletes, three young men, they're going to walk out of here with a degree or multiple degrees. We are proud that they represent Southeast Oklahoma State University in the classroom, on the court, in the community of, in Durant. You see them around, say hello, come check us out when, when we open up and uh, come see the new weight room, the new facility, and come see some games. Thanks, guys. Take care. Go Storm. Go Storm. Sure, Go Storm. Thank you.